In this video, we will look at how to launch a Nearpod lesson or to assign it as an asynchronous activity. So here I am at nearpod.com in the browser and I'm logged in and I'm viewing my lessons here. And as you can see, when I mouse over the lesson, I get two options, live participation or student paste. So live participation would be used when you want to launch the lesson now and deliver it to the students synchronously. Whereas student paste would be an asynchronous activity that you can assign your students to do at their own pace at their own time. Now on some of your lessons, you might mouse over and see quick launch. If you see this, this is because you created this as a quick launch activity. Up here at the top right is the quick launch where you can build a single activity, a single slide for the purpose of a quick check for understanding. So that's why this one has the quick launch on it only. It does not have live participation or student paste. First, we're going to look at how to run the live participation. So I'm going to click live participation for the synchronous session with students. Now you can see here there's all kinds of ways to share this lesson or get it to your students. For us, the best use case is to grab the link right here. So being that this is live participation, we're going to go ahead and grab the link by clicking link, and then we're going to copy the link there. Now at this point, if I'm in a Teams meeting, for example, I can paste this link into the chat area of the team meeting, and my students can click there to get into the lesson. Now, how does this look for students when they click on the link? When the students follow the link, they will see this screen, grab my name from. They will need to click on login with Office 365, and this will pass through their login. And you'll notice here it says, is this you? And it, they will see their name and their email address, and they can simply click yes, continue. So the beauty of this is that Nearpod is going to grab the names of your students and you don't have to worry about them having to type in their name or you don't have to worry about knowing who's who when you review your reports. Now, the other way to do this is to post it in Microsoft Teams. So I can select Microsoft Teams here. This window will pop open. And here I can share this to a person, group, or channel. Now, the other option is to create an assignment. Do not use this if you are running a live presentation. Create an assignment is going to be for the asynchronous self-paced version of the lesson. I'm going to click down here and simply search for the class team. And there is my class team called Science Dvorak. Now notice I have multiple channels in this class. So I can also select the specific channel that I would like this link to be posted. For now, I'm going to go ahead and select General. And I'll go ahead and click Share. So now what I've done is I've posted this into Microsoft Teams. And so if I bring up Microsoft Teams and I go to that class team, I will see here the link is now provided here for my students. And so they can simply click on that link. And again, it takes them to the browser where they will click log on with Office 365. Now back here at my view as the teacher, what I'm going to see is the teacher view of the lesson and presentation. And so what I can see here is 
I can take a look to see how many students down here are currently logged on to this lesson. And there we see I have one student logged in. And this will let me know when I have all of my students connected to my lesson so I can begin stepping through the slides. Also, I can click down here and take a look at who, is it, who exactly is in the lesson right now. Close that. And I'll go ahead and wait for students to respond. And we can see we got one response there from this student. And we could go on to the next slide and start activity for this slide and so on and so forth. In this case, this is a timed lesson. So that's why it waited for me to start the activity. We can see the timer up here at the top right, giving my students this amount of time to finish the activity. All right, and the time is up, and we can see how the students did, how many matches did they get, and how many tries did it take them. And we can go on to the next slide, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this lesson. And this is important, whenever you do a live participation lesson, you need to come up here at the top middle of your screen and select end session. If you don't do this, the session will remain open and you won't be able to start it with another class. So I'll go ahead and end the session there and it will take us out of that lesson and back to our library. All right, so now let's look at the other way to get your lesson out, which is self-paced. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the same lesson, but now I'm going to check student paste. Now here is where you're gonna to want to make this a Teams assignment. So you'll come down here to Microsoft Teams, like we did earlier, but this time we're gonna go ahead and click create an assignment. We'll go ahead and choose the class that this is going in and we'll choose the same class. I can give this a title. I can provide the instructions, which is simply gonna be for them to click the link below to access the activity. And I can assign it a point value. I can also set my due date and my due time and click Assign. Okay, so the assignment has been created. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like back in Teams. So here is the class team. I'll go ahead and go over to Assignments. And there it is. We can see the Nearpod demo lesson that I just created. And you'll see that I can go in here and I can actually edit the assignment further. So if I wanna do provide even more details in here about the assignment, such as adding a rubric, or if I need to add more resources, I now have all of these options in here as well. And then I can update the lesson. So that is how you can assign it as a self-paced asynchronous lesson. So we looked at both. We looked at the live participation and we looked at student paste. All right, in the next tutorial, we will look at how you can access the reports for each lesson.